I stand corrected. This is the best GoPro vlogging setup. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Susie with Gemini Connect. And in my last video, I introduced a GoPro vlogging setup that was quite similar to this one, except it had two pretty big issues. Number one, the GoPro mic adapter just didn't have a really good place to live. And so I was using a rubber band to keep that mic adapter in place. And a lot of you actually commented and made suggestions about what I could do to keep that mic adapter in place. Someone suggested using a piece of velcro to attach the adapter to maybe the side of the cage and that is indeed a viable option but the most common suggestion was actually to buy this Ulanzi V2 GoPro vlogging cage and so I did indeed order that from Amazon and it arrived at my doorstep at 8 o'clock this morning just as I was heading out to my restaurant photo shoot so I'm gonna take you along on that photo shoot later so thank you to everyone who made suggestions in that video. I really appreciate your feedback and I read every comment and I considered every solution that was thrown at me. And this is the solution that I think is gonna work best for me. So the Alonzi V2 GoPro vlogging cage is actually quite affordable at only about 16 US dollars. So it's a pretty good solution if you need to mount a microphone to your GoPro and don't really know what to do with that annoying GoPro mic adapter. And unfortunately you do have to use GoPro GoPro's proprietary mic adapter. If you try to use any other third-party options, then they just won't work. And I'm using the GoPro Hero 7 Black, and there's a lot of features that are improved on this GoPro, such as HyperSmooth and three built-in microphones. But all of that still does not replace the fact that using an external microphone just gives you overall better sound quality. What the GoPro sounds like. We are now outside. There is a giant, uh, really noisy truck going by. So here I have the Ulanzi V2 GoPro cage with my GoPro Hero 7 block inside and I have the GoPro mic adapter um, just resting inside of that cage at the very bottom. It's a really nice little placeholder for that adapter and has the mic jack over on the side. Right now I'm using the Saramonic external microphone. This is the microphone that I talked about in my last GoPro vlogging video, but if you don't want to use this microphone, you can also use the Rode Video Micro. But my main problem with the Rode Video Micro is that when it's attached to the top of your GoPro, it just makes that camera really big. And to me, the whole point about vlogging with a GoPro is to keep that camera and the rig itself really compact. There's a lot of things that I love about this cage and there's a couple of things that I think need to be improved. First of all, I love that this is a really low profile cage. I don't think it adds a lot of extra weight and it doesn't add a lot of bulk. So it keeps your GoPro pretty compact while also leaving you some space for that unfortunately very necessary GoPro mic adapter. The other thing I like about it is that it has a really intuitive design in terms of getting your GoPro in and out without too much hassle. So with the Ulanzi, all you have to do is turn it around, press down on the little corner here, and slide the back out. This cage also does have a cold shoe mat on top in case you're using a bigger external mic such as the Rode Video Micro or if you want to add a light to the top of your GoPro. Despite all the things that I love about this case, there are two things in particular that I wish that they would improve in future models. Both of these things have to do with this side area here, which is where the USB-C input is. So with most GoPro cages, including the cage that GoPro sends you when you first buy a GoPro, there's not quite enough room on the side here for where the USB-C input is. That means that you have to take off the little door that keeps that USB-C input waterproof. And it's relatively easy to take that door off and on, but that little door is very tiny and it's super easy to misplace. And I'm really scared about losing it, so I'd rather not take it off if I don't have to. And the second thing that bugs me about the Alonzi V2 cage also has to do with the USB-C input. And it just has to do with the fact that this cable right here is just a little too tight. And even though it will plug into the GoPro, it feels like this 
cable might snap at some point. Having a little bit more clearance between the adapter um, area and the GoPro would be great just so that this cable has some room to breathe. Other than those two things, I think that this is a pretty great cage for the GoPro, especially if you're going to need to attach an external microphone to use it for something like vlogging. So when you buy the Ulanzi V2 GoPro vlogging cage, you have the option of paying an extra $5 to get this Ulanzi mini tripod. If you don't already have a mini tripod, this might be a really good investment. But another mini tripod to consider is one that I've also featured in my other GoPro videos and a lot of you have commented and asked which tripod this is. This is uh, the official GoPro mini tripod and it's a little bit taller than Ulanzi's version. But in this particular case, I'm actually using another tripod, which I think is a lot better than those mini tripods because it offers a little bit more flexibility. This tripod here is made by Joby and they are most famous for their gorilla pod. This tripod is really special because of the center column here. And if you twist it, you can actually extend the tripod and turn it into a bit of a selfie stick. A lot of these smaller tripods will sit pretty flat to the surface, which means that you have to put it up on a shelf or somewhere really high in order to shoot yourself at eye level. The nice thing about this tripod is that it can give you a really short and low perspective if you need it, but if you're trying to get yourself at eye level, then you can extend it up to the height that you need it. So with that said, I'm now going to take you behind the scenes on the vlog that I shot with this new GoPro vlogging setup, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you think. Good morning! Today I'm going on a trip to do some real estate photography over on Bainbridge Island, and I'm going to take you along with me. Now entering Mount Baker Station. Whenever I'm shooting interiors, I have maybe 30 or 40 minutes maximum, and I'm shooting in between service, so I have to make the most out of my time. I always start with my wide angle shots first, and then I move in tight and get the details. Alright, so when I'm shooting wide angles, I always start with the corners. I do pretty much every single corner of the restaurant, and then I try to just get as wide of a shot as possible. And this is especially important in this space because it actually connects to the next door deli and cafe. So we're going to go ultra wide with the 16 to 35 lens and got some really good natural lighting. So I'm trying to take some uh, bracketed shots just to be able to capture the dynamic range between the inside and the outside because it's ultra sunny today. Another thing that I try really hard to do whenever I'm shooting real estate or architecture is to show the relationship between all aspects of the space, which is why I like to go super wide. And in the back, we actually have a nice bathroom. So, using that ultra wide angle lens, the 16 millimeter, I'm able to capture the whole space and just show how much of the space is connected to each other. All right, so after I'm done with my wide angle shots, I'm gonna get the camera off the tripod and switch over to my 24 to 70 millimeter lens to get some details. And I like to get off the tripod because it just helps me to get better angles. For most of my detail shots, I'm going to be shooting at a high enough shutter speed so that it doesn't really matter if I'm handheld or not. Taking off the 16 to 35. Now that we're done with our wide shots, and I'm switching over to 24 to 70 f 28 lens, which is my absolute favorite lens for detail shots. If you're wondering, I do try to keep all my baggage on me if possible so that I don't accidentally take photos of it in my frame and have to Photoshop it out in post-production. One of the big challenges of the space that I saw when I first walked in is the fact that the back has several mirrors. You just have to be more mindful of that when you're shooting your interior shots to make sure that you're not accidentally showing up in the mirror. But when I'm doing my detail shots, I can actually make those mirrors work for me and get some really creative angles. 
another photo shoot over at Bar Hitchcock. Thanks to Chef Brendan and the team for having me out to have a first look at the space and do some photos. And now I'm going to head back uh, to Seattle through the Bainbridge Seattle Ferry. And on my way, I found this little uh, trail here. It looks like they're going to be taking part of the park here at Bainbridge and turning it into a pedestrian trail. And that's just one of the things I love about Seattle and the Washington State area. There's just such a nice emphasis on keeping our parks and our green spaces uh, maintained and open for people. And it feels a little bit off the beaten path, but in reality, you're not too far away from a city and a pretty urban space. So yeah, that's just one of the little things I love about Bainbridge and Seattle and Washington State. So. Thanks for watching and coming along with me today. I hope you learned some things about photography and uh, video. I filmed this entire video today on the GoPro Hero 7 Black with the Ulanzi uh, GoPro cage and the Saramonic mic. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.